Well, Michael Martin has been Speaker of the House for nine years, but recently his role has become embroiled in a series of controversies. Our political correspondent, Carol Walker, has been looking back at his career. There were cheers all round when Michael Martin was ceremonially dragged to the Speaker's chair eight years ago. He was an unconventional choice, but many who hoped he'd be a force for change came to blame him for blocking reform. Hello, Martin. How you doing? He's been a Glasgow MP since 1979, a former sheet metal worker who became a union shop steward and city councillor before entering Parliament. Proud of his Scottish background, he resented the sketchwriter's nickname, Gorbals Mick. The transition to Speaker was difficult from the start. Order, order. Critics said he failed to understand the traditions or procedures of the House. I'm too busy to worry about the criticism uh, of others. That, uh, it's not for me to concern myself with the criticism uh, of others who are not members of Parliament. Hi. Hello, sir. Hello. But the police raid on the parliamentary office of the Conservative immigration spokesman Damien Green brought more trouble. The Speaker was accused of failing to protect MPs' rights and the power of Parliament to hold government to account. Then came the rows over expenses. Michael Martin himself was investigated for using air miles from official trips to fly his family to New York and claiming £4,000 for taxis for his wife's shopping trips. There was astonishment when the supposedly impartial speaker turned on one of his critics. It's easy to say to the press, this should not happen. It's a wee bit more difficult when you just don't have to give, uh, how do you say, quotes to the express. It was his role in defending the discredited expenses system that led to his downfall. Supporters said he'd been made a scapegoat. Too many others felt Michael Martin could not be the man to restore public trust in Parliament. Carol Walker, BBC News, Westminster. Let's go to Michael Martin's constituency now, Glasgow North East, and speak to our Scotland correspondent James Cook, who's there. So is Michael Martin expected to step down as an MP as well and, and therefore trigger a by-election? Well, Sophie, local Labour Party officials here certainly think so. They've told us that they're already preparing for a by-election in the summer. It would be another summer by-election for Labour in Glasgow. The one last year was, of course, disastrous for them, one of their safest seats in Scotland being lost to a resurgent Scottish National Party, Glasgow East, that seat was. As to the reaction here in Michael Martin's constituency to his imminent demise as Speaker of the House of Commons, it's been pretty mixed, it has to be said. There are those who support him, who say he's a great man, who's done a lot for the constituency. There are those who say he's been made a scapegoat of for the misdemeanours of other MPs in the, the claiming, or fiddling as some would put it, of their expenses. And there are those too who say it's right that he should go. Quite a few people we've spoken to here say it's right that he should leave and they indeed would be happy if other MPs were to follow. One of them said everyone in, the, in Parliament should resign. So a lot of mixed reactions which Labour Party officials expect to be expressed in a by-election this summer. James Cook, thank you very much. Let's speak to our political correspondent James Landell in Westminster. So when is Michael Martin expected to go? And uh, it looks like we're a uh, by-election looms. Yeah, we're expecting that he will actually stand down sooner rather than later. So the expectation is not today, not at the next general election, but probably in the next week or month. People are saying the end of June, certainly the uh, beginning of July. People within government are expecting that there will be an election for the new speaker, certainly before the summer recess, which begins on July the 21st. Uh, as for a by-election, yes, people down here within government and beyond are expecting a by-election in the speaker's constituency uh, over the summer. The inference being that he will stand down as an MP, as is customary, and likely go to the House of Lords. And in the meantime, the Prime Minister has said that no Labour MP who has defied the rules on expenses can stand at the next election. Yeah, that's right. What the Prime Minister has also done this morning is he had a meeting here in this building of Labour's ruling National Executive Committee. They've agreed a package of reforms of looking at a new way that internally they're going to address the whole issue of expenses, tightening up the disciplinary procedures, and effectively that will mean a new committee that will be able to decide whether or not all MPs uh, should stand or not. The key question with all of this is, and it's the same as for Labour as it is for the Conservatives as anybody else, is who is going to decide whether any rule has been broken or whether any moral rule has been broken? Because a lot of MPs 
have abided by the current rules, but they have been br breached apparently what you know is, is right and wrong. And the, the difficulty for anybody that is set up by the Prime Minister or the Conservatives is they've got to decide who is guilty and who is not. And it's not entirely clear yet where they're going to draw those lines in the sand. James Andale in Westminster, thank you very much. You can, of course, see the statement um, by Michael Martin, Martin at half past two on the BBC News Channel. Now, the ringleader of the July...